Welcome to the sixth and final tutorial. In this tut, we're going to look at manipulating parameters of materials using scripts. Uh, you can see here, I've just created a cube in the scene with an normal universal render pipeline lit material. I've turned the emission on and set that to white. Uh, I've created a FF and FFT object array script, which is just a copy of the same of the version two of that script. We're going to iterate on that so we can make our cubes glow to the music. And I've created an FFT set material color script. This is going to do all of our hard work for us. So what do we want to do? We want to access our FFT and the number of FFT bands, same as we do in all of our scripts. So we can copy that over. Uh, in this particular script, we want to use our require component tag because we need to make sure that it has a mesh renderer on it so we can access the material that we're going to set the parameters of. So in this um, particular script, because we're setting uh, the material parameters based on an individual index in the FFT array, we need to include a public int FFT index and make that equal zero. So for example, if we had eight bands, this could be an index from anywhere from zero to seven. And if it was frequency of 64 bands, this could be an index of anywhere between zero to 30, uh, 63. So what else do we need? We need the, let's, in this example, we're going to set the emission color. So what we need to do is grab the public string and we need the color name in the material that we're going to set. Um, and I'm going to give you the color name here for the universal render pipeline material, lit material. It is the emission color, color spelt the American way. Now we need a public color that we want to actually set our material to. So when we say we get a high reading on our frequency band, we want to multiply our color by, so for example, let's just set this as a default of color white. And we want to put a scalar in there so we can multiply past the uh, base color. So we can push this color, multiply it by five so we can get it to really hit, really emit a lot and push past that bloom point in the post effects. So let's do public float strength scalar equals, let's just set that to three to begin with. Okay, and of course we need a reference to our mesh renderer. Renderer, there we go. Okay, uh, let's do our void start. And let's grab our mesh renderer using our get component mesh renderer. Now in our update, all we need to do is we want to calculate our the strength first of all strength using our get bands, which we do all the time. So our FFT get band, FFT get band, uh, give it the index that we have set up here and passing in the frequency bands. We want to then multiply that by our strength scalar and that gives us our strength. Now, something we might want to do here is to make sure that this make sure to make sure this index doesn't go outside of uh, the range that 
has been set up here in the frequency bands actually and so this can be done at runtime let's set that here make frequency bands equals math nope, math f clamp and we're just going to clamp this value to so we're going to clamp this value to from zero to the maximum of the frequency bands minus one because it's a zero based index oh sorry that's meant to be fft index we're clamping the index between zero and the number of frequency bands minus one because it's a zero based index so we've got our strength we've got our index now what we can do is we can grab our mesh renderer and we can grab the material and set the color on that now we can pass in the color name up here so this could be set to any color name uh, that a material has uh, so there's a base color there's a mission color or any other color that your particular shader has and now what we can do is we can multiply our color times the strength okay so if we drop this on our, our cube here uh, okay FFT material set color yep let's grab let's hook that up to let's hook it up to the drum this time just for something different uh, frequency bands let's stick it down to eight so there's less to choose from and let's just go let's change that to index one let's see what happens have we got our mission color set yep there we go Let's ramp that up to there we go so we're getting a nice response there okay so that's one cube so you can see how you know if you were filling out a scene with visuals you could have you know certain elements lighting up to certain aspects of the music especially when you've got split into these different stems here so you might have your your visuals rep, rep, representing your atmospheric qualities visuals representing your drums and synth and all that kind of stuff so what we're going to do now is take what we've got here and we're going to turn this cube into a prefab I'll just I'll remove this old one here let's take this cube down here make a prefab out of it uh, maybe I'll set it to a scale of 0.1 maybe point two let's go point two okay now we've got our prefab cube here which has our set material color on it what we're going to do is modify make a version of the FFT object array script and pass in all the values that we need to manipulate the materials on each of these individual objects so to do that we're going to need to pass the values in that we need for this script so um, we'll we'll need our what do we want we want public color I'll just call it public color color uh, we want a public float strength uh, we'll call it color strength actually and we already have our FFT and our frequency bands to pass in so that should about do it I think okay so what we need to do is when we're creating our objects in the first place what oh actually what yeah when we're finished creating all of our objects what we want to do is iterate through each of our objects and make sure uh sorry we want to add a fft set material color component to it so we we'll want to go to our set We want to add a component to our objects that we've already created in this array so we use our add component add a set material uh, 
Then we want to, into this component here, we want to set all the variables. So we want to set our color in there, which we've now got a public variable in here for. And we want to set the strength to our color strength in here. Then we just need to set all of our frequency. So FFT equals FT. Uh, we'll set the FFT index to the iterator here. And we just need to set the bands. Uh, what was that in there? F freak bands equals freak bands. Okay. So this goes through all the objects in the array that has been, has been created. It adds the set color component, sets all the public variables on there so it knows what to do. Then what we need to do, that should pretty much be it for that script. If we go back, let's create a new object. Uh, Let's add our FFT object array to it. We'll add this, let's grab the drums this time. Frequency bands, let's get 64. Object to spawn, we'll drag our cube over. Now I did just realize since we're actually adding this FFT set material color script in, uh, in the script, we can remove it from the prefab. Otherwise we'll end up having two on this and we'll end up with some null reference errors down here. Our uh, object array, always good to name stuff so you know what you're looking at. Don't want a messy hierarchy. Uh, we'll make it a circle. Uh, so that radius up to two. Scale strength five. Let's, set a, let's grab a yellow. Let's grab a nice bright yellow. And our, set our color strength up to five. And let's see how we go with that. Here we go. So push our scale up to There we go. So we got a nice radial array with setting the color of each of those cubes. Oh that's the end of the tutorial series for now. Uh, if you've liked these shoots, let us know and we may end up doing some more in future and building on what we've learned here. Thanks for your time and hope you've had fun. Bye.